Exodus chapter 1 is, uh, is stating like this. And Pharaoh charged all his people, say, Every son that is born, ye shall cast into the river, and every daughter ye shall save alive. I'll be preaching on the subject, part 4. So this morning is part 3. Now part 4, the inconvenient truth. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this uh, passage of the scripture. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness towards us. Thank you for your son who died for us, that we may have eternal life through him. Thank you, God, that you have given us the word of God, the trust, the knowledge, the facts, whereby we can base our lives and that we can live and we can communicate to you through the Bible. Lord, I pray tonight that you may be with us and please pour your wisdom upon us that each and every listener on live streaming, be it members of Metropolitan Bible Baptist Church or members of other churches in the Philippines, in America, in Australia, in uh, New Zealand, in uh, <coughs> other countries, I pray, O oh God, that you may open their hearts and their minds, that they might be able, Lord, to understand the topic and the theme that we will be uh, uh, dealing tonight. I pray, O oh God, if there is anyone who is not saved, Lord, that you may draw through your Holy Spirit, that you may draw him to the Lord Jesus Christ upon repentance of his sins. Lord, I pray now that you may help us now to focus our attention to the preaching and preaching uh, teaching of the word of God. And I pray, Lord, that you may get all the glory, praises, and thanksgiving from this service. You may increase, Lord, and I must decrease. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. This morning, I uh, preach on uh, the second, uh, the second uh, point, which is the Truth is inconvenient. Can you remember what was the first one? The first point in our, in the title of the inconvenient trust is trust is intentional. It doesn't come to you naturally. You need to sacrifice. You need to be ready to, to uh, uh, what do you call it, have an effort to lead, to uh, what do you call it, to study, to read, to learn how to read, to write, to communicate, to ask from the teacher. You need to go to school. You need to uh, enroll. You need to uh, pay for the teacher's uh, sacrifice. You need to hire a tutor if you don't understand. You need to do research if you are already, uh, you know, advanced student. Do research everywhere, anywhere, and not only those things that you like. But you also research that you don't like. It's just like the Christians and the Bible. If we study the Bible, we study the, the verses that we like and also the verses that you don't like. I know that you have hobby horses. You have verses that you like and you have verses also that you don't like. The same with me. But when I study the scriptures, because I love knowledge, I want to know those verses that I don't like. So that should be our our you know intention it's not only that you like because any of us does in any of us uh, only few like school okay so even if we don't like school we don't like the teacher we don't like the bible we don't like god we need to study the word of god we need to uh, approach god we need to uh, ask him as his people because when we know the truth that is the time that we can be saved. When we know the truth, well, that is the time that we can go to heaven. When we know the truth, that is the time that we can escape danger. When we know the truth, we can, we can actually be protected from any destruction of our lives. That is the truth. Now, that was a good introduction, okay? <laughs> so, uh, that is truth is intentional. You cannot ha have a silver platter truth. No, 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 no. You need to do it. Second, truth is inconvenient. That is, 
uh, have been discussing that for two series, part two and part three. This morning was part three. And now I'm not going to dwell on that anymore except for one. The last one because uh, uh, I did not touch it. The next uh, point is trust is indispensable. But before that, I will go to number 14. You have human carnage as, as number 13. And now you have number 14, depopulation. The trust is inconvenient. It is because it will lead you, if you have no trust, it will lead you to depopulate, to destroy humanity. Look at verse 22. And Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born ye shall cast into the river, and every daughter you shall save Allah. That is depopulation, that is the plan of Bill Gates, that is the plan of Fauci, that is the plan of the communists of China and every communist progressive uh, uh, people. That is their aim. That is the aim of the uh, socialists in this country, socialists in America, socialists in, uh, in uh, New Zealand, socialists in, um, in uh, Britain, socialists in the Philippines, socialists everywhere in every country. That is the purpose. To destroy humanity and only then they believe that is worthy of this world. Others like me are not worthy of it. It's because the, uh, you know, if you have no knowledge, you are very choosy. You are very selective. Yeah? Or you only choose what you like. You don't, you don't choose what you don't like. Why? Because uh, if you have no knowledge, you don't know between reality and non-reality. You don't know what is true and what is false. Or everything that you see is true. You don't know. Uh, I was just, uh, I was just uh, watching this uh, at lunch. Um, somebody posted on eBay about, uh, uh, you know, about a dog that is watching TV. <laughs> and that dog was watching uh, like, uh, like, like uh, his master and uh, the, uh, there was a you know, there is a good movie that uh, was uh, I mean that was not a good movie because that was scared even the dog was scared and when the, he was scared he ended up uh, closing nearer to the TV screen and he started uh, uh, barking ho, 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 ho. but when there was no scary scene he was silent See? That dog uh, pretend, I mean, believes that what he was seeing is true. And it's just like the, what you know, dogmatic people, it's just like the communists, it's just like the socialists, that everything is true. They don't know how to distinguish or differentiate between true and false. They have false consciousness, they have false awareness, they have false uh, knowledge about the truth. That is why they cannot learn the trust because they trust itself, they, they uh, recognize it as false. It's not uh, true according to their consciousness, according to their awareness or understanding. That's why it is not easy for them to learn the truth. Now, let's come to that verse. It says, uh, And Pharaoh tries all his people, saying, Every son that is born he shall cast into the river. And who is this person that was cast into the river? Was he able to uh, uh, kill everything, everybody, every child, every uh, um, boy that is born? No, you know the story. Moses was inspired by God. <laughs> you can just imagine. Now, there, there was a lot of carnage of babies at the time in verse 22. Except for one boy, God is spared. And you know who, who cuddled her, who, who took care of him? Who, uh, who uh, uh, what do you call it, protected him? It was a God actually used fear. <laughs> it was fear. It is bear. It is, uh, it is uh, what do you call it? It is uh, to us, uh, to human, uh, what do you call it, to human uh, understanding, it is, it is very sarcastic, is it? <laughs> the thing that you are avoiding, the thing that uh, the Pharaoh was uh, avoiding, it, he was the one who was. Uh, who was uh, told by God to protect the danger 
He didn't know that the danger to his life was in the house. And some of us is like that. Because we have no knowledge. If you, you know, if you have no knowledge, you miss it. You miss the point. You miss the trust. You miss the real thing. Where is it? It's God. It was you don't know. According to that verse, verse 8, a, a new king rose up. Now there are rose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not history. Which knew not, you know, history in Australia is called what? Uh, society, environment. So I read that in that verse. I read that. There, now there arose a new king over Egypt, which knew not society and environment. <laughs> which knew not modern history. Which knew not the history of Egypt. Some of us would not like to read even history. You know what? You miss truth. You miss facts. Because in history you will learn. You will learn the past. You will learn the truth, the facts, and the, the knowledge of the past. And by the way, this Bible is a knowledge of the past, of the present, and the future. Without this book, you will never learn the truth. You will never learn the knowledge from God. So that's why it's very important. The population is the result without knowledge. So let's pray, Christian. If you are listening, this is, you may just appreciate this uh, preaching. That is good preaching. But uh, you have a duty. Your duty is to pray. That the people that pretend that they have knowledge, that they are going to destroy the world. We need to pray that God will intervene and send people to them and share the gospel of Christ. And pray that God will soak in their hearts and acknowledge that they are sinners and come to the Savior. Turn away from sin and come to Jesus and believe Him and be saved. That's the only remedy. That's the only solution. To have knowledge of God is to repent and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, let's go to the number three. Trust is indispensable. You know what is indispensable? A simple English, Australian English means what? You cannot, it is a thing that you cannot, you cannot live without it. Trust is indispensable. Do you know that uh, <clears throat> some people doesn't even believe they exist? <laughs> when I was researching on my uh, dissertation of uh, uh, education, I came across some references and some sources that say that uh, some people do not believe that they exist. Now, how do you know you exist? And uh, uh, some writers say you exist if there is a, there are actually treatises of existence coherence, and the other one is correspondence, and the other one is pragma pragmatic, okay, practical uh, knowledge that by experience, by the five senses that you have got, if uh, if you can smell it, it's real. If you can touch it, it's real. If you can hear it. It's real. If you can see it, it's real. See? That is five senses. Reality. Now, there are, there are people that uh, maybe they have no five senses and they are uh, doubting that uh, truth is not real. But you cannot live without it. Even if you don't believe there is no trust, you cannot exist without trust. That is why um, existence is actually dependent on God. If you believe you are an atheist and you believe on existence, you believe that God exists. Because without, without existence, there is no existence of God. Since you believe, since uh, you believe there is existence, since you believe that things exist, since you believe I exist, since you believe that you exist as an atheist, therefore there is God that exists. Because he is the originator, he is the source of existence. Everything will fall apart without God's existence. Because 
the existence of things that is dependent or are dependent with the existence of God. So you cannot do away with existence. Now let us look at some of the verses. I have uh, I have chosen some verses and those that we have not touched and those that we have already touched. But there is another truth that we can gain from it. Let's come to the first one. Truth is indispensable. It's very necessary. You cannot live without truth. Because expressions leads to growth. Hello? It's a presence. The presence of trust leads to growth. You know, trust is uh, God. He, he is the one that uh, is, uh, uh, what do you call it, the basis of existence. So, let us uh, read at verse 12. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied, and grow, and they were great because of the children of Israel. So that's the truth. No matter how you stop, no matter how Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, tried to stop the people increasing, the people exploding their population, they, he couldn't stop. That's why he was scared. And now it continues to grow. It con the population continues to grow. So we have here uh, um, trust leads to growth. And if you are a Christian, if there is no change in your life as a Christian, there is no growth in your Christianity, that means there is no truth in you. Can you believe that? Because the, the uh, what do you call it, the uh, nature of truth, when you have it, is to grow. And if it doesn't grow, you have to ask yourself. Question yourself. If you have not one soul, if you have not one even one soul, since you become a Christian, you need to ask that. If you don't know how to share the gospel, you need to ask that. Because the, if you become a Christian, the tendency of a natural tendency of a Christian is to learn how to share the gospel. It's to learn to uh, preach the gospel. It's to learn to share somebody else with what you have. To share your faith with others. That is... That is the uh, nature of a Christian. If you just stay idle, you are just comfortable sitting down, and you do not move, you don't even pray for the church, for the pastor, for the uh, brothers and sisters in church, and you don't even have any business uh, interfering in prayer about what is going on now, about the pandemic COVID-19. And when China is oppressing the whole world, when China is destroying the whole world, and you are not involved in it, in prayer, just only at least in prayer, there is a question of your Christianity. And you do not even react whether you like Chinese or you, you don't like them. You don't have any, any reaction. Now, I'm not, a real Christian will always oppose combination, will always oppose, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, fascism will always oppose that is uh, against uh, the teaching of the scripture communism and uh, uh, fascism and uh, Marxism and uh, all sorts of ism like humanism, like uh, socialism, like collectivism. Look, the consensus has no ism. So <laughs> the consensus or the, your, the majority, well, the, we have no word about majoritism, they all get into that single word of what? Of destroying humanity. And if you cannot even, be, your face doesn't even blush or, or uh, get rid as a reaction of opposing the truth, rejecting the truth, destroying knowledge, there is something wrong with your Christianity. See? We need to react. We need to, to uh, be challenged. We, this is challenging times. We need to be challenged to, to uh, defend the truth. Or uh, some people say that uh, uh, we don't need to defend the truth because the truth itself defends itself. But we need to be excited that the truth is attacked. And you, we are just, uh, we are just, what do you call it? We are just uh, uh, sitting down. We are just comfortable. Uh, who cares? That's the Australian uh, expression. Who cares? Say. Of course, God does care. 
God allows it to happen. What are the things that we can we can actually learn from this pandemic times? We need to grow. We need to grow in grace. We need to grow spiritually. We need to grow and uh, in our maturity so that we will not remain as a babe in Christ. Number two, verse 17. Now I have read verse 17 this morning. I will go back to verse 17. But the midwives feared God and did not as the king and did not. It's not did not that uh, in grammar, okay? That is the person that uh, he did. They, they did not uh, do what uh, the king has uh, ordered them to do. So, but the midwives feared God and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the main children alive. That is doing righteousness. So we have trust is indispensable in order to produce righteousness. We, you cannot produce righteousness. You cannot produce holiness without, without trust. First of all, how can you know that it, you, what you are doing is right? If there is no basis, there is no foundation of the trust. It is only the trust that tells you that what you are doing is right. If there is no trust, there is nothing, you, you cannot call anything right. See? So we need to have the trust. And the Bible is the basis of our trust. God wrote the Bible and we need to rely on what God says. That's why don't reject books, especially this number one book in the world, the King James Bible. All right? You need to have that. If you have no copy, you buy copy. You can even know. You can afford to buy chocolate and you cannot afford to buy a single copy of the King James Bible. It is the most important book ever if you want to have knowledge, if you have to get education. So you need to don't don't bother uh, uh, you know buying the electronic device. I mean the electronic Bible. I don't uh, I like the electronic Bible, but I like more this one. Because this is hard copy. I can I can uh, bring this anyway, and I don't like uh, uh, people who are bringing their electronic Bibles to church because that is a bad a uh, big uh, bothering. It can bother you. It can, uh, the pastor doesn't know if you are already on FB or during the service start. I want you to have a hard copy of the King James Bible. When the pastor preaches, you need to have a hard copy and then, and then open to the verses that he dealt with. Okay? So you have to have the word of God. That is the truth. You need not, uh, by the way, there are Bibles that are false. Don't bother buying it. I just recommend you to buy the King James Bible. That's the trust. And you will not be mistaken having the King James Bible. Many people will not chastise you of, uh, of uh, that of saying that this is, uh, what do you call it, this is uh, obsolete. This is antique. Well, God's word is antique. You know, God's word is new. But, uh, you know, its message is even fresher than you think. Its message is very advanced, even the CNN that covers the advanced news. There are many news in the Bible that the CNN have no idea. See? So, the Bible is a very advanced information book of knowledge. You want knowledge? Go to the book of knowledge, the Word of God. Trust is indispensable because its presence grows, it leads to gross, it leads to righteousness, and then the same verse, it leads to recognition of authority. Now, who do you think is the authority in verse 17? There are two authorities that the midwives have to uh, pay attention to. But who is the authority that the, uh, what do you call it, that the midwives follow? And if you are a Christian, that should be your formula. You know who is in authority. The other authority is false. The other authority is a communist. The other authority pretend that he knows knowledge, but he does not. The one that needs to have authority in our lives is the absolute trust who is God. 
the midwives in verse 17, the, but the midwives feared God. Okay? They did not fear Pharaoh. They are ready to die just in case uh, Pharaoh decided that to kill these uh, uh, midwives. But by the mercy of God, there is no record that these midwives were put to death by Pharaoh. You know who protected? It's not Pharaoh, it is God. Because they fear God. Now, Christian, please uh, attention. Attention, uh, your attention, please. Look at it. God will protect you if you know that He is your authority. But if you consider others as your authority, He will have, you have a problem. You will be miserable to get His protection. Okay? So don't hesitate to ask God as your authority, just like the midwives. And by the way, you are in the right track. It is 100%. Your decision to get God as authority is 100% correct. And you will not be wrong on that. The Bible says, But the midwives were God, and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, but save the main children alive. What a beautiful picture of a faithful, uh, faithful believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. That should be our attitude. When there is a conflict between two uh, problems, between two authorities, between two evil, God always wins. Okay? God always wins. If there is a conflict, choose God. Don't choose the one that you like or the, the one that is human, the, the one that is accessible by you. Choose the God that saves you so. Okay? That is letting uh, the presence of truth leads to growth, leads to righteousness, leads to recognition of authority, and the, the presence of truth leads to salvation. Look at that. Don't you know the babies, the baby, the, bo the boys, the boy babies, or the male babies, no, I'm not, I'm now tongue tied, okay? Sister Maria, you find me. Okay? The uh, main babies, that is what uh, how the, the, the Bible describes the main babies or the main uh, children were actually saved from utter destruction by the king of the land. See? There is salvation. Uh, the presence of truth will lead you to salvation. If you are, if you are a, uh, not a believer in Christ and happen to watch this uh, live streaming, my desire for you is to have the trust. To decide to have the trust, and when you decide to have the trust, you must be willing to repent, turn away from your sins, and trust Jesus as your Savior. And that is the start of, of uh, learning the trust of the Word of God. Now, we have salvation, and then verse 19, that is the faith one, the presence of truth leads to wisdom. Verse 19, and the midwives said unto Pharaoh, because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, for they are lively, and are delivered ill, the midwives come in unto them. See, that is wisdom. You cannot, uh, you cannot expect that these uh, ladies can explain like that. See? Some people, uh, when they are confronted with uh, their boss, they are tongue-tied, they are silent, they are scared, they are intimidated. But this, there is no emotion here that you can feel that uh, the, uh, what you call the midwives are scared of fear. It's just like the Hebrew children. How can I remember the three Hebrew children? They were, they were utterly uh, uh, singled out in the reign of Nebuchadnezzar that they are the only three people, including Daniel, that did not bow their heads to the uh, idols that uh, Nebuchadnezzar uh, made. And uh, when you read the history from the Bible, these three the three children were interrogated by the king himself. And then uh, they were asked, 
Do you know that uh, uh, because you have uh, uh, what do you call it? You have uh, you have uh, violated our role by role of worshiping these idols that I have made. That you will be going to be burned seven times in the uh, fiery furnace. And they said, uh, we don't care. We are ready to do that. And I like it. Some people who would not like sacrifice, who would, like would not like to sacrifice their lives to God. And these three Hebrew children were ready to sacrifice. These men wives are ready to sacrifice. They just answer the question. And they, they tell Hebrew children, we are not careful to answer the English matter. See? If you read the book of Daniel, you will have that kind of answer. All right, and then we have these uh, these uh, uh, Hebrew midwives answering the question with what clarity, with solemnity, with uh, decorum. They are not to what you will arrogant. Some of us are arrogant, but uh, this is a warning, by the way. If you have the truth, say the tendency is to be arrogant. If you have the truth, you should have humility. You know, real truth makes you humble. You need to you know, be humble because you have the trust. The truth in Christ. You know, Jesus was the most humble of all that existed on earth. He went to the cross. He did not blame his uh, persecutors. He did not uh, uh, blame those who brought him to the cross. And what did he say? Father, forgive me, for they do not know what to do. Wisdom. So if you have wisdom, you can, you can answer questions. You can you decide what is wisdom? Correct thinking. Now you are a Christian. Do you have more correct thinking? I mean, sometimes. <laughs> that is right. Sometimes. Because if you have no knowledge of the scriptures, you have no wisdom. Wisdom doesn't come to you uh, ignorantly. Wisdom doesn't come to you naturally. You need to learn the scripture and then you will have wisdom. Correct thinking. Some people will not go to a church on Sunday. We did it, would rather go to football, uh, you know, football watch or football games or, or in, a, in a picnic or anything. Rather than going to church. And their wisdom, according to them, is uh, this is only this is the only time that I have to uh, you know to be uh, 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 be friends with other people. So uh, I'm always in church, so Pastor, can God uh, excuse me for that? That is not wisdom. What is the wisdom of the scriptures? Say ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. So seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That is my going to church is a priority. And if you are a member of this church, and if you are a member of other churches, and you have not gone to church by listening or live streaming, that means that there is no uh, the the church is not a priority. God is not a priority. But if you are here or watching and listening and intently uh, uh, knowing what uh, the message is and uh, you are praying that God will uh, help you to apply the message in your life and read the Bible, the scriptures to have, to gain knowledge so that you can have righteousness, so that you will have, when you will have uh, growth in your life and then you can share salvation to others, you can win souls, that is needed in wisdom. Now, correct thing, it is very important. There are some Christians that do not know how to set priorities of their lives. Remember that if you are a Christian, God is always number one. Even if you are single, and I know you are thinking about who will be your partner, and who will be your future wife or uh, future husband, seek God first. And you will have a good wedding, you will have a good marriage if you seek that first. Because he is the one who is, he is the author of your would-be husband, of your would-be wife. But if you will not seek God as your priority, you will have a miserable 
uh, marriage life. See? You need to uh, take note of that knowledge. It is from the scripture. Okay? And block only some, some uh, young people do not like uh, the Bible, do not like, uh, you know, to have knowledge from the scripture because uh, that will, uh, that will uh, stop them from looking to the, the one that they like. But wisdom is very important. Because sometimes we look for a beautiful one or a handsome one and yet you end up your marriage in destruction. You end up, you have been faithful before and now the, the wife or the husband that you have leave you to not go to church anymore. There are lots of examples. My wife last week uh, uh, told me about one uh, uh, Christian who was faithful before but when he, he got married, he didn't go to church anymore. So that is one case. We need to have wisdom to uh, have uh, for the season. And then next one is uh, trust is indispensable because its presence leads to growth, righteousness, recognition of authority, salvation, wisdom, or correct thinking, strong and working women. How is that? Look at that verse, uh, verse 19. Lively. Wow. Lively. You know, some uh, women, because they do, they do not uh, read the Bible, the whole of the Bible in, uh, in the Word of God, in the King James Bible, they say that uh, the women are not allowed to work. What a trash. These Hebrew children, these Hebrew people, no one was exempted. During this time, that uh, if a man is having work and his salary is not sufficient to, to finance the needs of his family, he, he needs another one to help him. So that's why both of them should be working. It's good if, if you marry a billionaire, maybe you can just, uh, you know, you can just uh, sit down comfortably in front of TV and uh, just uh, do the house and, turn, and that's it. But during this time, you need to be practical. These Hebrew women, which nice, they are lively. Do you want to be lively? All right? Some people are not lively because they are not strong. They are not, uh, you know, they are not, um, uh, what do you call it? They are not healthy. These Hebrew women were healthy. If you have the trust, it will lead you a good, bodily, spiritually health. Okay? You become healthy. Physically and spiritually. Next is uh, it leads to sovereign goodness. Look at that, uh, you know, there is an indication in verse 20. Therefore, God dealt well with the midwives. He dealt well with the midwives <clears throat> by what? See? Sovereign. The word dealt is not a what? It is not an accident. The reason why the uh, Hebrew midwives did the right thing, they feared God, is not an accident. They did it because they were actually trained by their parents to uh, learn about the word of God, to learn to trust that there is a God in the universe. Every, every child, every Hebrew child is taught during their, uh, their uh, slavery in Egypt, that there is a God. They were introduced early in childhood about God. It is unfortunate in our times today that, that parents, many, many parents, especially those who are unbelievers, they don't care about introducing God because if you introduce God, it is a religion. And they don't like religion. Do you know why we have lots of people that reject God, the reject religion, the reject Christianity? It's because they have no knowledge. They have rejected long time ago because of these progressives, of these socialists, of these collectivist people, of these communists, of these subfascists, of these masses that are actually in, infiltrating our universe. So if we will not 
uh, you know, spread the gospel, the communists will spread the gospel. That's the problem. So we need to really exert effort with God's mercy and with God's grace to spread the gospel of Christ. Even during pandemic time, we need to, you know, use, uh, uh, what do you call it, you use our uh, uh, device, electronic devices to uh, tell them about the Lord Jesus Christ. For next, uh, what do you call it, for next uh, Sunday, we have, uh, that is a godly, you know, uh, Mother's Day. So uh, I challenge you to invite uh, mothers or women to listen to this uh, live streaming because I'll prepare a topic for women next Sunday. So that is one way to deal with them so that they can have knowledge. Now, goodness doesn't come naturally. It should be dealt with. And God dealt with it in verse 20. Now, there is another one, another point that uh, <clears throat> we have in uh, number 8. The population explosion in verse in verse 12, not verse 20, verse 12. There is population explosion. If you have the cross, your, the population actually increases. It doesn't decrease. So we have here the, uh, uh, what do you call it? The uh, knowledge that we have in uh, the scripture. Look at that verse uh, 12. The Bible says, but the more they afflicted them, the more, the more they multiplied and grow. And they were great because of the children of Israel. See? They multiply. So, so uh, affliction, suffering, pandemic, COVID-19, and others are not a discouragement why we need to prop. We need not to move for the better. We need to be, we need to be uh, encouraged to success, to, uh, to have successful lives. Just because it is COVID-19 and it is pandemic time, we are locked down, we are bored, but we are already discouraged to improve, to, to uh, be uh, strong in the Lord, to be prayerful. By the way, this is the time that you can actually be strong in the Lord. You can read your Bible, you can, you can uh, pray all day long, you can uh, communicate to others to your uh, mobile devices or electronic devices. This is the best time because during the non-lockdown, you are busy with your work. You have no time to, uh, to uh, perform what God uh, commanded in the scripture. Including those uh, people who are not uh, working, they are also busy during uh, non-pandemic time, non-lockdown time. So this is the best time to grow. This is the time to increase our, you know, our knowledge of the word of God. Last one, there is material blessings. There is material blessings. Look at verse uh, 21. Wow. Look at that. God is a real estate agent, isn't it? <laughs> Look, verse 21. And it came to pass because the midwife heard God that he made them what? Houses. See? Houses are material blessings. Look at that. They did not pay anything. It was given or they were given, the houses were given free. Why? Because they are in the truth. They were the, you know, they were the uh, messengers of the truth. And God, God needs messengers of the truth. Do you know why you are not blessed? I am not blessed or... Some Christians are not blessed. It's because we continue to defy the trust. So tonight, as I end up with this uh, point, you need to learn to 